about this module. Follow the prompts on the screen to navigate through the module. Quick quiz questions appear throughout the module. These are simple knowledge tests and are not scored or used in your final assessment. Final assessment at the end of the module is your opportunity to demonstrate your knowledge and you will receive a score on these questions. All answers have appeared in the learning material. Navigation tip. Screens are interactive. Navigation prompts may occur at the top or bottom of the screen. Objectives. The objectives of this e-learning presentation are to understand the flow of nonconformance in the GMP environment, understand deviations, understand root cause analysis tools, understand the Kappa system and steps in Kappa management. Introduction to deviations, RCA tools, and Kappa. What is a deviation, incident, nonconformance? It is non-fulfillment of GMP requirements. It can be a QMS nonconformance, QMS not followed, product nonconformance, product not meeting specification, process nonconformance, process not followed. Definitions of deviation, incident, and nonconformance. Incident or incidents, an unplanned event that is not part of standard operation. Deviation, any departure from the approved instructions, procedure, or established standard. Nonconformance, a deficiency in a characteristic, product specification, process parameter, record, or procedure that renders the quality of a product unacceptable, indeterminate, or not according to specified requirements. When can deviations, incidents, or nonconformance occur? They can occur when there is an error during the manufacture of a batch. A batch is made outside of the validated parameters, cleaning, process, equipment. The wrong procedure, equipment, or non-qualified or non-calibrated equipment is used to complete a task. The correct procedure is not followed. There is an unexpected failure of a system or utility that affects product quality. Can also include the receipt of damaged starting materials or components or a temperature excursion. What are corrective and preventative actions? Corrective action, CA. Action to eliminate the cause of a detected nonconformity or other undesirable situation. Note, corrective action is taken to prevent recurrence, whereas preventative action is taken to prevent occurrence. Preventative action, PA. Action to eliminate the cause of a potential nonconformity or other undesirable potential situation. Note, Preventative action is taken to prevent occurrence, whereas corrective action is taken to prevent recurrence. What is a CAPA? CAPA is a quality assurance system which addresses quality events which may occur or could be anticipated to occur during healthcare products manufacturing. A continuous improvement, CI, tool used within quality assurance system. Aims to prevent a recurrence, corrective action, or to prevent issue occurrence, preventive action. Key Kappa definitions. Immediate correction. Action to eliminate a detected nonconformity. Corrections typically are one-time fixes. A correction is an immediate solution such as a repair or rework, also known as remedial or containment action. Corrective and preventive action, CAPA, plan or program. 
a systematic approach that includes actions needed to correct correction, avoid recurrence, corrective action, and eliminate the cause of potential non-conforming product and other quality problems, preventive action. Corrective or preventative. Name it corrective action only if you already have a product nonconformance or process noncompliance. Product failing specifications. Confirmed customer complaint. Use of obsolete documents. Audit finding. Quick quiz one. Select the best answer and click Submit. A corrective action is a one-time fix such as repair work or rework, also known as remedial or containment action. True. False. Deviation Management Industrial Flow for Handling of Deviations Login of Deviations and Description Event Detection and Investigation Risk Analysis and Impact Assessment Deviation Categorization Root Cause Analysis CAPA Efficacy of Corrective Action and Conclusion Verification and Closure Categorization of Deviations Major Deviations when the deviation affects a quality attribute, a critical process parameter, an equipment or instrument critical for process or control, of which the impact to patients or personnel environment is unlikely, the deviation is categorized as major, requiring immediate action, investigation, and documented. Critical Deviations when the deviation affects a quality attribute, a critical process parameter, an equipment or instrument critical for process or control, of which the impact to patients or personnel or environment is highly probable, including life-threatening situation, the deviation is categorized as critical, requiring immediate action, investigated, and documented. Categorization of deviations continued. Minor deviation. When the deviation does not affect any quality attribute, a critical process parameter, or an equipment or instrument critical for process or control, it would be categorized as minor. Quality risk management can be used for the identification of product attributes and operational parameters which are critical to manufacturing operations in order to identify in advance their associated risks. Investigation management. Once the problem is contained, investigate what caused the problem. Initiate the investigation. Problem investigation. Problem investigation is a science, not an art. It is important to conduct a thorough RCA analysis on an issue and determine the root cause. The person leading the investigation should be trained in the techniques of RCA. Initial actions after identifying an issue. Identify what is immediately affected. Does this situation impact other products, equipment, raw materials, components, and or systems? If there is product involved in this event, identify and evaluate lots or batches run before and or after the event under investigation. Has any affected material already been released, distributed to customers? Take urgent action. Determine what actions can be taken immediately to reduce the risk to the patient, public, company, etc. These are often termed corrections. Corrections. Some examples of corrections are 
initiate urgent remediation action. Recall product if product quality has been compromised. Quarantine product. Stop manufacturing, last resort. Stop the leak or clean up the spillage. Replace faulty equipment. Root cause analysis, RCA. RCA is a key element to a site's quality system. Important considerations include, don't forget the past. Has this occurred previously? What is the potential impact on other batches or on other products? Don't stop at the first plausible explanation. Brainstorm and list all potential root causes and then complete the process to eliminate any possible causes that can be eliminated. If the real root cause is not on the list, then it will never be found. If you do not find a confirmed root cause, address the potential root causes and monitor the issue. Monitor. Follow up on implemented action. Steps involved in RCA. Define the problem. Collect the data. Identify possible causal factors. Identify the root causes. Recommend and implement the solutions. Tools of RCA. Checklists are beneficial in providing a standard, consistent list of potential sources of error. For example, was the correct procedure followed? Was the person trained in the procedure? Does the procedure match actual practice? Is this a recurring issue? Was there an equipment problem? Was the equipment calibrated? If the checklist does not identify the root cause, there are a number of other tools that you can use. Brainstorming. Brainstorming can be used in association with other root cause analysis tools, e.g. fishbone diagram on slide 32. Brainstorming is a method for generating a large number of creative ideas in a short period of time. Approach. Unstructured shout-out ideas. Thinking outside the box. Structured rotation around the room for ideas. List every idea. You may need to come back to the list later. Chronology. The arrangement of events in order of occurrence helps determine where a problem began. Change analysis determines whether a change occurred and identify the moment of that change. Helps identify where to look for the ultimate cause. Barrier analysis, evaluation of current process controls to determine whether all the current barriers pertaining to the problem were present and effective. Problem, incorrect expiration date on label. Current controls, line clearance. In process manufacturing inspection. Final manufacturing inspection. Final quality product release. Why the controls failed. Item not specifically in the line clearance. No formal checklist for inspection. No formal checklist for final manufacturing inspection. No formal checklist for final quality inspection. Five whys. Simple tool to identify causal factors and elicit possible root cause. Five whys is an iterative interrogative technique used to explore the cause and effect relationships underlying a particular problem. The primary goal of the technique is to determine the root cause of a defect or problem by starting at the possible cause and repeating the question why. Each answer forms the basis of the next question. 
you need to verify that the original problem is addressed. Fishbone Diagram Ishikawa Diagram Simple tool looking at exploring key areas that may have led to the problem. The problem statement is shown as the fish's head facing to the right, with the causes extending to the left as fish bones. The ribs branch off the backbone for major causes, people, materials, method, measurement, machine, environment, with sub-branches for root causes, to as many levels as required. Comparison Matrix This tool's main features are better isolating what is involved or impacted in the problem, identify parts that do not play a role in the problem so as the focus on why the issue occurred is not confused, allows for greater ease in asking the question of why did this occur? Did. Who did it happen to? Did not. Who didn't it happen to? Did. When did it happen? Did not. When didn't it happen? Did. Where did it happen? Did not. Where didn't it happen? Did. Who was involved? Did not. Who wasn't involved? Did. What happened? Did not. What might you have expected to happen but didn't? Probable root cause. Important note. Unless you have indisputable evidence, the definitive root cause may not be found, but the most probable root causes and all contributory causes must be considered and, if necessary, addressed. No identifiable root cause. If you cannot find the root cause, you will be unable to develop corrective action. In this situation, you must still generate a complete investigation report demonstrating the problem solving used. The report must clearly explain why you believe you are unable to identify a root cause and what the most likely root cause may be. Risk management. Do we always need an investigation? Sometimes the root cause is obvious, but not always. Theoretically, we should investigate every issue. However, resources are limited. Not all issues have the same significance. Therefore, we must prioritize and risk assessment is one of the best tools to use. Quick Quiz 2. Select the best answers and click Submit. The following methods and tools are useful for root cause analysis. Choose the correct responses. There may be more than one. Five whys. Fishbone diagrams. Product quality reviews. Brainstorming. Quick Quiz 3. Select the best answer and click Submit. Some examples of corrections are, choose the correct responses, there may be more than one, stop manufacturing and quarantine product, finish manufacturing and quarantine product, replace faulty part in equipment, stop the leak or clean up the spillage, Review and revise the preventative maintenance schedule. Implement a preventive action. Kappa management. Kappa plan. Corrective action. Corrective action. Corrective action. Must have at least one identified CA or contributory factor for each root cause already identified. Each corrective action must include the following. How this action will avoid the recurrence of the identified root causes. Recommended interim action if the proposed CA is not immediate. Implementation verification. How, when, and by whom. 
Effectiveness check. How, when, and by whom? Can this action be extended to other products, processes, systems not yet affected by this root cause? If yes, open a preventive action. Kappa plan. Preventive action. Preventive action should have at least one identified PA for each potential root cause already identified. Each preventive action must include the following. How this action will avoid the occurrence of the potential root causes. Recommended interim actions if the proposed PA is not immediate. Implementation verification. How, when, and by whom. Effectiveness check. How, when, and by whom. Steps involved in Kappa management. The identification of the problem, nonconformity, or incident. An evaluation of the magnitude of the problem and potential impact on the company. The development of an investigation procedures with assignments of responsibility. Performing a thorough analysis of the problem with appropriate documentation. Creating an action plan listing all the tasks that must be completed to correct and or prevent the problem. Implementation of the plan. A thorough follow-up with verification of the completion of all tasks and assessment of the appropriateness and effectiveness of the actions taken. Close kappa after effectiveness of the action taken. Kappa process flow. Responsibilities and authorities for the Kappa system. Roles. Kappa initiator. Responsibilities. Initiates Kappa request describing the inputs. Assigns Kappa owner by or with the agreement of QA. Roles. Kappa owner. Responsibilities. Owns Kappa and is involved throughout the entire Kappa life cycle. Assembles team of appropriate SMEs to analyze issue risks, root cause, and determine appropriate corrective actions, preventive actions, and effectiveness checks. Ensures actions are implemented as required and within the agreed timelines. Performs effectiveness. Responsibilities and authorities for the Kappa system. Continued. Roles. Quality manager. Responsibilities. Approves Kappa pre-implementation, post-implementation, and foreclosure. Compiles Kappa metrics and reports to quality director. Roles. Quality director. Responsibilities. Reports Kappa metrics to site leadership team. Kappa plan. Most probable causes to the issues are now determined. Time to put a plan to fix the issues. Need to ensure the issues do not occur again. Effort can be wasted if the identified issues are not dealt with in the corrective manner. Kappa plan considerations. Is the Kappa plan adequate? Requires time to generate. If not enough time allowed, system is ineffective. Evaluate if other actions are required, i.e., if revising a document, it may be noticed that other documents also require revision. Allow time for evaluation before the preventive actions are agreed. Kappas must be effective. Is change management required?
establishing kappa effectiveness. Each potential root cause and every contributory factor should have a CA and or PA. Every root cause should be covered in the kappa plan. Can be several root causes. Sometimes CA does not address them all. Responsibility on who prepares the kappa plan should be clear. Who identifies the kappas? Verifies implementation. Evaluates effectiveness. Establishing kappa effectiveness. Continued. Each kappa should be described in detail. Explanation of the actions. How they will avoid occurrence, recurrence of root cause. Who and when actions will be implemented. How effectiveness will be documented and proven. For each CA should consider if other systems could be effective by the root cause. If so, PA must be created. Implementation of Kappas Every regulated company needs a clear accountability of responsibilities as well as an adequate tracking system to verify the implementation of each Kappa. Do not confuse this with measuring effectiveness. Change Control have now decided how to fix the identified root causes. Need to make sure the CA and or PA actions and activities will work. The actions will often involve change control. If qualification validation status is affected, then requalification revalidation is required. If the change is to written procedures without major change to processes, then the formal change process is followed and associated training if applicable. The change process is also involved for major changes to the process. The implementation must not have any adverse impact on the product. Implementation of CAPAs Frequent observation by regulatory agencies is that CAPAs are not correctly implemented. The CAPA plan must be effective. The CAPA plan must include description of the actions to be carried out, who is responsible for implementation, when the actions will begin, who is responsible for the effectiveness evaluation, how the evaluation will be carried out and documented, when it will be completed. Effectiveness versus implementation check. Some companies only measure effectiveness by asking, has the CAPA been implemented? And not assessing whether the action has actually worked. Effectiveness checks. Effectiveness should be measured by ensuring the identified root cause does not recur, not by the absence of the problem symptom. This is because the same problem can be caused by a different root cause. In this case, it will need a new investigation. How long does it take to measure effectiveness? Some companies have a fixed period, three months, six months, or one year. But if you use a fixed period, e.g. three months, and the process is performed monthly, we will only have three results, which statistically isn't a large enough sample. A recommended approach is to link the time period to the frequency of the process being fixed. Maximizing the repetitions to 10 increases confidence that the action worked. Effectiveness Check Outcome Kappa is fully effective. Close out Kappa. Kappa is partially effective. Extend Kappa to allow more time for evaluation or a new Kappa or additional actions may be required. Kappa is not effective. 
a new CAPA or additional actions may be required. Traceability. CAPA package must include all documented evidence, risk assessments, root cause analyses, record of CAPA extensions, extension approvals, Investigation Report Management Investigation Report Deviation Event Investigation Reports should be documented on a standard template that assists the investigation owner to ensure that all relevant information is recorded. If an automated QM system is used, then the report template will be configured by the software and the investigation owner report writer just needs to complete the relevant information in the boxes provided by the system. Reports need to include event information and a description of the issue. Investigation Report Continued 1. Event Information Affected Product Process System Date Occurred Date discovered. Date reported. 2. Description of the issue. What happened? What should have happened? What is the specification or instruction? Where did it happen? How was the event discovered? When was it discovered? Who discovered it? Investigation report continued. 3. Immediate actions taken. What was done after the event was discovered? 4. Initial impact assessment. Does this situation impact other products, equipment, raw materials, components, and or systems? If there is product involved in this event, identify and evaluate lots or batches run before and or after the event under investigation. Has any affected material already been released, distributed to customers? Risk classification of the event. Investigation report continued. 5. Investigation details. Problem definition. Current barrier analysis. Root cause analysis. Causal factors, potential root causes. 6. Conclusion about root causes. What are the most probable root causes of this event? Root cause classification of the event. Case study, RCA, drug product stability. Description of the problem. The subject of this case study is an event that took place during the stability testing of batches of a biological drug product DP in pre-filled syringes, PFS. The consistency batches were under test. These batches were also earmarked for use in clinical trials if needed and for commercial launch stock. At the nine-month time point at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius, product-related impurities that were known degradants were seen at significant levels during anion exchange, HPLC, AEX, HPLC, chromatographic analysis. These impurities had never been seen before at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius at this time point and with this formulation. The product was in late phase 3 and therefore the product stability was supposedly well understood. The degradants were also seen at the accelerated storage condition of 25 degrees Celsius at 60% RH in the 1 and 3 month samples, but the levels seen were no higher than for previous batches. Low levels of these degradants are normally seen after 2 to 3 years at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or after exposure to light. The stability samples were stored in cartons that provided protection from light. The results were deemed to be out of trend, OOT, and therefore an out of specification, OOS, OOT investigation was initiated. Laboratory Investigation 
The laboratory investigation showed no laboratory error and did not produce an assignable cause for the OOT results. New samples were taken to confirm an OOT result. For this purpose, five separate syringes were taken, solutions were prepared, and each sample was individually analyzed. Two of the five samples showed the impurities seen in the original samples. The problem was intermittent, and it was not at all clear what was going on, and a root cause investigation was initiated to determine the root cause. RCA The investigation focused on why some of the syringes were normal, no impurities, and some were not. A brainstorming session was held to try to identify possible causes. Some possible causes were eliminated quickly, but the following potential causes were discussed in detail. It was possible that the product was interacting with tungsten in the syringe needles. This is a known problem, but it had not been seen previously in this product, so why now? Was there a problem with the PFSs that it resulted in a greater contact between the product and the needle. It was not clear how this could happen, but a decision was made to look into this possibility, albeit unlikely. More likely, there could have been a larger amount of silicon in the syringe barrels or on the stoppers that could have caused problems when in contact with the DP. Again, this had not been seen previously, but this could be a result of variation between lots of syringes. It was also possible that an unreported temperature excursion or excessive light exposure had occurred during handling of the syringes in production. The batch and stability records were closely reviewed as part of the investigation and it was discovered that 1. The original stability samples were taken and placed into stability storage at same time as the batch release samples were taken. The batch release data were taken as the TO result. The remainder of the batches were shipped to a secondary packaging site for cartoning for commercial launch. It was discovered that additional samples were needed for stability studies and these samples were shipped from packaging site at around the six month time point. During the investigation, it was confirmed that these samples could not be distinguished from the original samples and therefore differences in the samples could not be investigated. RCA continued. Studies were set up to look at the impact of syringe needles and silicon on DP stability. In the end, these were determined not to be the root cause, but the studies were completed since the information provided was useful. The syringe vendor was contacted to determine whether there were any issues with the syringe lots that were used. The vendor of the stoppers was also contacted. The history of the batches and the storage records were also reviewed in greater detail to check for anything that might have been missed. Also, further samples were requested from the packaging site for further analysis to confirm or otherwise that something had happened to the syringes while at the packaging site. Findings As a result of the investigations performed, the following findings were made. 1. No issues had been observed by the vendor related to the syringe lots. 2. No temperature excursions were recorded either during the manufacturing process, the finishing visual inspection, or during shipping or storage of the packaging site. There were also no excursions of the stability chamber. 3. When analyzed, it was discovered that many of the syringes sent from the packaging site had significant levels of degradants. These levels were even higher than the nine-month time point yet they were only analyzed three to four weeks later. Not long enough to account for the differences in the storage conditions were equivalent at both sites. Four, however, some of the syringes had no detectable degradants. Again, the data showed the intermittent nature of this problem, so syringes were satisfactory 
and some syringes had failed the drug product specifications. Something had happened to the syringes at the packaging site, but it was not clear what. Therefore, a decision was made for representatives of the investigation team to visit the secondary packaging site. Root Cause During the visit to the packaging site, it was discovered that the lights in the cold room were left on permanently during the day. It was not at all clear why this was done. The light sensitivity of the DP had been clearly communicated to the site prior to shipping the batches. The solution that the site had decided upon was to store the syringes, which were stored in racks awaiting packaging, by covering them with black polyethylene sheets. When these sheets were held up to the light, a significant amount of light was getting through. The sheets were affording very little light protection. To evaluate the extent of the problem, samples were taken from the outer layers of the racks and from the inner layers of the racks for analytical comparison. As expected, the inner layers had very low levels or no detectable degradants, and the samples from the outer layers had significant levels of degradants, many of them failing specifications. It is important to note at this point that the packaging site had never handled biological DP prior to these batches. However, that did not justify leaving the lights on in the cold room, but it did help to explain the lack of awareness of the instability of some biologicals if not stored correctly. Kappa. The Kappa plan included placing all three batches in quarantine, and when it was clear that the good syringes could not be distinguished from the bad syringes, all three batches were rejected and destroyed at considerable cost to the company. This problem did not impact the process validation since all three batches met all acceptance criteria for the validation protocol. However, new lots had to be manufactured in order to provide the primary stability data needed for the BLA submission and in order to replace the lost clinical and commercial stock. Changes to storage procedures were immediately implemented and a further investigation was made to determine if any other batches stored at this site were impacted. Intensive awareness training was performed to ensure that all packaging site staff could appreciate the differences between small molecules and biologicals. A number of changes were made to the, st the stability testing procedures, which included ensuring that all new studies included extra samples to allow for retests and investigations, prohibiting taking extra samples for stability studies after the study had been set up, to ensure that such a problem does not recur and that all samples in the study have experienced identical storage conditions throughout their history. Lessons learned. A number of salutary lessons were learned from this event, an event which cost the company time, money, and wasted resources and materials. The main lesson learned was that more care was needed when storing biologicals. There seemed to be a cavalier attitude to product storage. The packaging site had never handled biologicals before and had probably been lucky that a similar event had not previously happened with a small molecule DP. It is also possible that other products had been poorly stored and had degraded, but that the instability was never discovered since products are rarely tested once they have been packaged and bulk product is rarely retested after packaging. A bigger problem could be waiting to happen, such as a major product recall. Some important lessons were learned about the conduct of stability studies. Taking extra samples to add to the study after it has been initiated is not an acceptable practice and could lead to unforeseen problems as this case study illustrates. Taking extra samples at the initiation of a study is far better approach even if the samples turn out not to be needed. Leaving the lights on in a cold room or any storage area is a bad practice, as is the use of black polyethylene sheets or any other untried method of protecting from light. 
but perhaps the most important lesson learned was that biologicals need to be treated differently from small molecules. Biologicals are not only more susceptible to poor storage conditions and practices, they are also more susceptible to other environmental factors and must be treated appropriately. Any site that has never handled biologicals before should be given the necessary awareness training before they take on the handling of biologicals, even if it is just to store them. Final Assessment Review the module before commencing your final assessment. All questions relate directly to information and principles covered in the slides. You can only attempt each question once. Question types may include true-false, drag-and-drop, and multiple choice. Good luck.